Hi, welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. I'm Chris Ruvo for ASI. Of late, economic headwinds have been blowing. Soaring inflation, rising interest rates, falling stocks, and declining consumer sentiment. It all has some economists saying that a recession is imminent or already underway, which got us thinking. What would another recession mean for the promo industry? And more importantly, what can distributors do to adapt and even thrive amid an economic downturn? Here to answer such questions are three top-notch distributor executives who've led their companies to success in good and bad economic times. We have Zach Ottenstein, president of Top 40 Distributor, The Image Group. We have Kathy Finnerty thomas president of Stowbridge Promotion Group, a fixture on ASI Media's best places to work list. And we have Tom Rector, founder and CEO of Screen Broidery, an award-winning distributorship and creative merchandising agency. Zach, Kathy, Tom, thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and, and top notch is a, is a good uh, um, acronym. <laughs> Listen, I, you, really you nice. go ahead and put that on your LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, it's official now. It's been said publicly. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll just remind anybody who's um, listening to this live, if you have comments or questions, you can um, type them in and we'll uh, try to get to them where possible and appropriate. So um, the first question I, I wanted to ask, and I know that you guys are not economists, but you're obviously business people and you're, you're watching this closely. Um, you know, do you think that we're um, headed into a recession and why or why not? And Zach, why don't we start with you just to get things going? Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Chris. Mm -hmm. I, the, the, are we going into a recession? You know, I think it's. I think a lot of concern is warranted. Um, and, and no, I, I don't consider myself an economist. But um, do I think that inflation and other macro factors could lead to a reduction in the manufacturing and services volumes in our country? Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> At the same time, uh, there's a lot of positive news out there. Mm -hmm. As an example. Um, I read recently an article indicating that manufacturing levels in the United States exceeded levels from before the 2008 Great Recession for the first time. Mm -hmm. So we see these negative headwinds, but then we're seeing results that are the best our country's seen in a long time. And we hear that from our clients, too. Some clients are thriving. Okay. Is unemployment historically low? Yeah, it is. So could unemployment go up? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but we're talking about starting from a base point that's as good as it's ever been. And we know in our business, and I'm sure um, Tom, mm -hmm. Kathy, you're experiencing the same. The labor markets are really challenged right now because there are so many people who still have not elected to come back to work. Mm -hmm. So will inflation and higher costs of managing a household, in addition to really attractive wage rates, bring more people back into the workforce? I think there's a lot to remain seen. Um, are we heading into a recession? I don't know, but I think we're coming from a place in a number of areas of the economy, and um, we're certainly concerned about the soft spots too. Mm -hmm. I think it's just how you choose to deal with them. All right, that's an interesting take. Um, Tom, how about you? We'll go to you next. Yeah, what, do you, what are you seeing and what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I also agree. I, I don't think that we're currently in one. Mm -hmm. uh, the economy is clearly sliding. Stock market is, mm -hmm. is coming down. We're in some... It's most expensive for transportation and energy costs, supply chain bottlenecks, inflation, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. what, I, what, I, what I really think that we are is that we're in the aftershocks of the COVID, um, the COVID pandemic that we experienced, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the CARES Act and all of, the, all of those random things that don't normally happen within the economy that mm -hmm. were subsidized that started to change um, how we how we operated and how um, money was used by mm -hmm. the consumers. I think that is these are I think what we're experiencing now are, is the aftershock okay. of, of of all of that. So um, I don't, don't want to put words in your mouth, Tom. But is you so you're saying that we had that kind of a cash injection into the economy, low interest rates, the stimulus, et cetera, that that kind of encouraged spending and kind of a, a boom, if you will, and we're coming off that a, a little bit. Yep. Well? Yep. Exactly. And. And the reason I don't think that we're in, an, in a recession is that one, unemployment rates are really low, mm -hmm. but two, also balance sheets are really strong, which mm -hmm. what which tells me is that um, when when the when the economy was stimulated with all of this extra money is that instead of people going out and spending it all at once because there are so many unknowns, what did we do? We we paid down debt. We invested in some equipment. Mm -hmm. um, we hired more people. Those are the those types of things then strengthen your balance sheet. 
So uh, we saw that for our own business in the fourth quarter of last year is that prices were starting to increase, but our consumers were all tolerant of those price increases. So they were willing to spend money, even though that it was things were more expensive than what they used to be. But that's because they had savings and they had uh, they weren't spending as much money on interest. Uh, so it allowed them to tolerate those costs. I think eventually that runs out. Eventually those month, that money starts to run out. So I don't think that we're currently in one. And by definition, we're technically not in one currently. But I think there are some concerns that we should be we should be keeping our eye on that okay. it, it okay. could be looming in the in the in the near future. All right. Interesting take. Uh, Kathy, how about you? What's your, what's your take? What do you see in the marketplace? You mentioned before we went live that you've kind of been through a couple of these, you know, already. So <laughs> is any perspective that you all have on this would be interested to hear? You know, every single one has been different. Every single crisis. Um, I joined the company shortly before 9-11 and the phone just stopped ringing um, completely. Um, but then we started selling patriotic T-shirts. We could not get enough flag pins. We sold things um, to increase business security. Um, We're in an industry where we sell over a million products. I can't think of a better place to be in in any kind of crisis because we always have something to sell. Um, There certainly is a little uncertainty right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, you know, one thing that COVID kind of taught all of us is, you know, deep breath and yes, it's uncertain, but we'll figure it out. I mean, who would have thought in a million years we would sell millions of masks, um, many of them in the beginning that were even totally blank. I mean, you know, it, it's a very, very resilient industry for us um, and for all of us. But, you know, with the gas prices being high, I think inventories are starting to increase pretty substantially and probably because we are doing more U.S. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm seeing better inventory, um, but the gas prices certainly affects things. So it's just a lot of uncertainty, but I think we just have to be uncomfortable with uncertainty. I think we've learned to be that in the past few years. Oh my gosh, the last two years, right? That's that's been like a constant state of existence. If you're not comfortable with uncertainty, you might as well just go hide in a cave, right? Yeah. All right, so you um, you all started to already kind of speak a bit about maybe what what we could do to you know, which is kind of the I think one of the real important questions, which is um, you know what are some strategies and tactics distributors can use to uh, to weather a, a recession or even or even thrive within one. And um, Kathy, why don't we stick with you? Um, what are, what are some things you think distributors can do? You know, I think looking for the opportunities. Really, um, first off staying away from being fearful. Um, Fear is one of the most paralyzing things um, and it makes it very hard to be creative. But I think that I almost like crisis mode because it takes away the norm and makes you really focused to be creative. Um, And so I feel we're we're still in that mode from COVID. Um, And so it's just a different kind of creative. So really listening to the market. In 2008, when the market collapsed, it was we had just moved into a new building um, that we own. <laughs> um, it, so it was, it, you know, we had made some pretty big investment and all of a sudden the market dropped out from from underneath us. Um, we actually got into uh, banner printing because and we do some production. We've always had a commitment to production, even though we started as a promotional product distributor. Um, so many of our customers loved our art department, loved what we did. Turn, they love that we turn things quickly. And we got into banners and we had a up year in 2009 um, because we found another category that our customers um, were buying and not buying from us. So, so do, you, do you then see um, either a category or a service or whatever it might be this time around that, that might prove you know, recession proof, so to, so to speak? Is there, is there something you're, you're seeing? Well, I think what we've seen in, in past ones, um, at least in 2008, we saw, you know, people quit buying a Nike polo, but they also, um, you know, they would they buy a Port Authority polo or something like that. Um, it, you know, it, it's it's such an exciting time to be in this industry. I, I don't remember a more exciting time because now customers really get branded merch. They understand that this stuff is really valuable, that it builds connection and and has so much more power, you know, in the recession when they sent stuff out to their employees. I mean, their employees felt so appreciated. 
And so we're at such an exciting time where people now feel brands are more important um, and they're buying more expensive. We're not, we're sometimes the first thought, not the last mm -hmm. thought. Um, and, you know, it used to be trade shows. Yeah, yeah, I've got a trade show. We got everything going. Oh, gosh, we need some pets. You know, so we were the afterthought and not the first thought. And that has really changed in this industry. So I think we're still um, going to see a lot of brands. And I think people will see us as a way. This is the kind of advertising people thank you for, not the kind that we all try to turn out and avoid and pay extra so we don't have to see it. Yeah. So. Interesting I, I, here, I, Zach, I, let's I, go to you next. Yeah, yeah Kathy, I, um, I strongly agree with you. Um, seek opportunities during times of challenge. I, I think that's great wisdom. Uh, and that's been my experience uh, in this industry and in other industries. Um, I previously worked for a large publicly traded company and I'll never forget in the 2008 crisis when our CEO came in and said, I've been through a few of these cycles and I'm letting all of you know, this will be the most transformational time for our business. It was that, that company yeah. up to over 300% and created enormous shareholder value uh, during that cycle. And because um, business and life, to a greater degree, in my view, is a series of patterns, you know, we've lived some of these patterns before. Where were the areas of opportunity? Um, and, and then how are you setting up your business today to be ready for those areas of opportunity? It, at the end of the day, as business operators, our job is to build a resilient business model. And you got to know your markets, you got to know your customers um, to understand what those opportunities might be for you. I think everybody's talked before about inelastic demand for things like food um, and health care. So we all know that during recessions, health care can be an industry that's safer because the, the those health systems are generally more resilient during challenged economic mm -hmm. times. But I challenge people to extend beyond that. Look, look at where your spend is actually happening within your clients. Is it operational? Is it sales and marketing? Is it internally focused to employees? Mm -hmm. Operational spend is probably going to be cut at a later point mm -hmm. than a trade show coming up in December. That's a great point. Yeah. Yes. So understanding how resilient is your spend within your clients is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always viewed it that way here. We want to be diversified, not just across our book of business, from the clients and the industry verticals we serve, but also the types of business that we're providing to our customers. And all of our reps are challenged on a quarterly basis to look at the business they're doing with their clients mm -hmm. and identify, are there opportunities for spend in other areas of the client's business than those that we have captured today? Because uh, if you aren't getting it, someone else is. Mm -hmm. Another tactic I'd recommend um, to weather a recession is get your team together. Mm -hmm. uh, we we did that, uh, and it took us longer than it should have to learn the lesson. But we have adopted a daily huddle, a weekly management meeting, and a monthly meeting where we face the brutal facts as a team, we address the challenges that may exist, and we work together. If the ideas are just coming from myself and my partner, John Levine, we will not succeed. Mm -hmm. The idea could come from every level of your organization. In my experience, mm -hmm. the best ideas come from the people who are on the ground floor day-to-day -day with customers. They're the ones who are hearing the voice of the customer and the voice of the market. They should be the ones helping you define your recession strategy. You know, should you need to develop one? Okay. All right. Great, great yeah. stuff. So, is it, Tom, you sounded like you're eager to chime in. What, do you, what are your <laughs> thoughts on this? Yeah, I, 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 do, I agree. And um, what, one thing that's really, at least in my mind, that's awesome about economic downturns, recessions, um, even even challenges that we saw with so many unex, uh, unexpected situations that were coming at us like in 2020 is that it really allows you to, it forces you to step back and take a look at your business and where are you going to compete and where are your opportunities? What do you need to do to circle the wagons? As our job as leaders is primarily to protect our organization and protect our employees. Like that is one of the, what's one of the most important things that we have to do. And it comes with one being prepared and being able to see things that are happening at all angles, but also is being able to have the vision and have the strategies that are in place and be able to make those little pivots like Kathy did with, with um, adding banners to the, to the portfolio is like being able to, to, to see where those opportunities are and make those small pivots along the way. Um, 
in order to survive in some situations and then succeed in other situ situations. So um, one thing that I'm working with our team right now is really helping them understand, um, this is something I challenge you, you all to do, is that um, really recognize that, hey, we're in a competitive marketplace. In competitive marketplaces, there's lots of, um, there's lots of opportunities for our customers, especially when we have 30,000 distributors that are all out selling similar items. So a really question is like, all right, where are we really competing? And once you understand that and what's your real competitive, um, um, your, your competitive abilities and, and where you can actually stand out from the crowd, then we've really refined our sales process. We, we started this a couple of years ago, but really, really refining our sales process where we're shifting from just pitching products all the time. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think one thing in our industry is that, and, and I think it comes from the suppliers when they come and do site visits and mm -hmm. they're showing you all these things that are like, oh, so-and-so has sold um, 10 million of these um, <laughs> tumblers. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like, you should, you should be able to sell 10 million of those tumblers. Well, guess what? Not every customer needs tumblers at this point. So what? So shifting that sales process to really understand what is the need of our customer and what are they trying to do? What's their main objective? And then finding the solution that meets that objective. So it's in, 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 in layman's terms is why am I pitching tumblers when my customer really needs pad folios? I need to right. understand what their true need right. is. Yeah. Start um, with it. Start with the need and work back from that. Yeah. And then, yeah, and, the then, and then yeah. find the solutions that way. Another thing that we're doing is really focusing that I think this is the competitive competitive edge for almost all of us is that it's not about the products. It's not about the price. I can compete on, I can offer the same products at the same price point. That's pretty easy. But where we really start to separate is on the customer experience side. Um, and we do this thing. It's and I, I can't take all credit for it, but it's something that Airbnb has done and they call it the seven star process. And it's, and it's understanding is like, what does it take to get to a five star? If you're doing some type of a rating, whether it's your Uber rating or Google rating is get to that five star. Typically to get a five, to get five stars is you have provided the service in the expectation of what your customer was wanting you to do. You've met the expectation. So where we call it, we call it storytelling land. And that's where we're always trying to get is like, okay, that's what our customer is expecting us to get. That's the five star. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But where we really want to be is what's the six star look like? What will it take? What unexpected things can I provide to my customer? that's going to have them give us a six star and then go beyond that. What's the seven star, eight star and so on. And we call that storytelling land is that's where they, we've now given our customers something to talk about that was different, that really stood out to them that they'll tell their friends and their colleagues mm -hmm. and their family members about how great screen broidery was mm -hmm. at what we were doing. Um, in doing. In doing things in that manner, I think allows you to really compete in times of economic downturn where where people are being more selective on how they're spending their money and what they're spending their money on and who they're spending their money with mm -hmm. and that all starts to matter at some level yeah um, i th great points i don't want to be reductionist so t but i want to try to see if i could zing it and you tell me if yeah. I'm, I'm right from from what what you all have said it's basically you want to analyze your own business identify where you're ha where your most where your sh strength is both in terms of clients and in what you can provide in terms of services and support and then kind of dig into that and build it out a little bit and if we're doing that in down times we're able to we're able to weather some of the, what what me, might be happening more broadly in the in the economy is that yeah. a fair way to put it yeah. yeah zach do you agree or do my two yeah, except, except we got to do it all the time all the time okay, okay. and it's the preparation that you put into um, the work before the recession that I believe will really dictate uh, how prepared you are to take advantage of whatever good fortune may come to you. Okay. We don't know who the winners and losers will be. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to tell. In this, in, the, in this past cycle during the pandemic when interest rates went down to nothing, mm -hmm. there were some real winners and losers in financial services. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us could have anticipated mm -hmm. that. But uh, were, were you as an organization ready to bring solutions to clients in your book mm -hmm. who were winners mm -hmm. in the last cycle. And I think the same holds true here. And I love what Tom said. Uh, I think it's I think it's absolutely so. It's mm -hmm. it's about seven star service or plussing it up or mm -hmm. whatever that theme is mm -hmm. for your organization. Um, 
how are we bringing solutions to clients instead of just products? How are we helping our clients achieve their business goals? Mm -hmm. We need to be a partner in achieving business goals for customers. Mm -hmm. and, and I like to believe that during these times or any time, we aren't just competing with each other. Mm -hmm. This is not mm -hmm. a mission for the commercial products industry for your foremost part. We're competing with every marketing service provider yep. for your yep. marketing spend, for your employee rewards and recognition spend, whatever that spend may be. We're competing to be interesting. And there are more and more solutions every day that are bombarding our clients with ways that they can achieve their goals or attack it a little bit differently. And our job is to understand our clients and their goals well enough um, that when these times turn, we're ready to come to them with something, something that will help them get through it. Right. Um, this, this next question, I so hope it doesn't, it doesn't run over. Sorry. We can never accuse me of being someone to distill it. <laughs> 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 very good very good um so this next question I, I i hope it doesn't almost run counterintuitive to some of what we talked about but um uh, zach you had mentioned you know healthcare is one market that tends to maybe do better in in down times are there markets that that you think if we do head into either it doesn't have to be every recession of course but this this one that might be coming or this downtrend that's coming are there markets that you that you think might be stronger than others and um tom we can start with you the, uh, this time yeah, there absolutely. Um, it, when when times are tough and downturns happen within the economy, businesses do what we also do is that they're looking at their operation and they're seeing how can we innovate and how can we evolve, which also tells me is that when they're doing that, they're looking at software and they're looking at, at um, technology type um, um, solutions to help them grow and to help them get back on uh, get back on track. So. Um, along with healthcare, tech, the tech community is going to be big in, in an economic downturn. Um, we saw that uh, within the last the last small turn. Um, I think businesses in uniform apparel programs are going to be um, may not be bigger, but they'll still be strong. Is that those are requirements mm -hmm. for them to continue to function and operate in the way that they are. Um, and I think e-commerce and, and fulfillment needs will be just as attractive as always um, to try to, because businesses will either, if they have to, if they have to downstream their labor, labor force, they still have to interact with customers and that's an easy way for them to interact with customers mm -hmm. and, a, and a, an efficient way to interact with customers. Okay. Kathy, how about you? What's, what are some markets that, that you think might be a good ones to target? You know, we actually don't ever focus in our industry or in our business. Um, we've always had a really broad range of customers. So we focus more on what our customers challenges are per okay. se, than than actually let's go chase after an industry, a specific okay. industry. Mm -hmm. um, there was a real drive um, trying to think when it was, but when tech was really, really growing and then tech just exploded. Mm -hmm. um, and so those people that were totally focused chasing a sp specific industry, um, I think really were hurt by it. So we're really, you know, focused on, on our customers and what they need and, and how we can best fulfill that for them. Um, okay. All right. So for in, in your case, it's a matter of, of maintaining um, like a, a diverse pool of customers, meaning a diverse market mm -hmm. range customers and just continuing to try to find opportunities with, within that where they may lie as the, right. as the okay that makes that makes sense. Zach you had mentioned healthcare is there is there any ones that you think um that, that might be particularly strong Oops, Zach to be all right I, I thought I hit on mute before Are you guys yeah. me? you're fine you're good we got you <laughs> uh we we have four core markets at the image group and we, we do we do like verticals. Um, so uh, I'm not sure that all of our verticals will thrive. They, they rarely is it that all of our verticals thrive at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but our four core markets are higher education, automotive and manufacturing, building products, and healthcare with a focus on senior living. Um, I, I agree with Tom. I think technology is uh, going to continue to do well. It just seems like with the changes that have taken place in the world, um, a tech bubble wouldn't be um, forthcoming unless um, the stock market decides that it's time to 
you know, take their valuations down from 2,000 times earnings or whatever it is, because I think those are a little insane. Um, the, the other market, the other industries where I think there's going to be some strength, logistics continues to be really strong. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Construction and building products continues to be strong. And if you look at where consumer sentiment is, and, and also I, I point to uh, when you look in the news, you can see that these are markets where there's, there's a tremendous shortage of, of workforce. Mm -hmm. Demand exceeds um, the supply of labor. That usually is a sign that businesses are going to be uh, in a fairly advantaged position. If they're looking for more, if they're if they're if there's more uh, demand than there is supply, then in all likelihood, those businesses are, are fairly well positioned for whatever period forward you're looking at. Um, so we like logistics, we like building and construction. Um, I also think higher education is positioned well coming out of the pandemic with. Um, Schools reopening. I think. I think education. Also, with the uh, uh, government funding that's been passed, there, there should be a long runway of, of good funding uh, for public for the public sector. Okay. All right. Great. Um, all all excellent um, ideas. We we had a question come in, and I'll I'll put it out there to you. Um, and they're kind of talking. This is kind of like the ongoing. Uh, discussion in our industry, right, uh, on, on, on pricing and can we match online sellers? So the question is, can we match for in prints prices? Are we being re realistic to the shopping online online trend? Uh, I think that to some degree, um, you all have, have kind of addressed that a bit, talking about being consultative partners, but I don't want to put words in mouth. Anybody want to jump in on that first? Um, we compete with for imprint all the time and we have no issue matching their prices. Usually we beat them. For imprints, I've studied. I study a lot of our competition. For imprints, one in particular, and there, there's, there's, their pricing model is not set on EQP pricing. So if you have the relationships with the suppliers, and you're doing your due diligence to, to uh, have the right conversations with the right supplier partners, there's, we have no issue getting to the price point that we need to. Many times they'll match the price that I need to be at if I can't get there at at an EQP mm -hmm. um, price point, um, but we we've never had an issue because I, I get links sent to us all the time, and mm -hmm. we've never had an issue matching or, or getting better where we need to be. Just right, so using so back, using back your resources. Suppliers right. might be the way to go if you're really struggling on right on price. Yeah. One place to start. Zach, you see, you had you looked like you were ready to go too. Did you? Well, you have some thoughts on this one? Oh, I think. I think this is going to become an ever more present part of our um, work uh, for our sales teams. Um, mm -hmm. you know, E-commerce will continue to take a growing percentage of the spend in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but like like Tom, uh, our our purchasing power at the image group allows us to be competitive on the markets. So you know, I think there are some some specific product categories mm -hmm. where um, you know, they may not be as often sold by a distributor like. Uh, any of our organizations, but the aggregate spend from an online provider makes it tougher where you're seeing market compression more on a category basis at this point than you are across the board. Um, but for us, I think it does get back to what you said, Chris. I, I think, uh, and we, we say this to clients all the time, um, we're bringing a lot more than just the sourcing, more than just the price of the product. So it's the, it's the creative strategies all the way through the infrastructure we provide to service your enterprise needs. Um, sometimes we'll sometimes we'll be lower on cost, sometimes we might be higher, uh, but in the aggregate you're going to generate a lot of value. Yeah, in, in, in our sales process, when price, when someone sends us a link like that, they're, the very next question out of, our, out of our sales force is to ask, hey, it sounds like price is important to you. Okay. Um, and then, and then the next thing that they're trying to, so they're, then they need to qualify the budget. It's like, how much do you have to work with? Let's talk about that because I might be able to find you a better solution than what you just sent me. Okay. Because I need to understand more about what we're trying to do is that usually those, those first, because there's a reason why they just didn't go ahead and buy it through four imprint. That's they sent it to you yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Your job is to find out what that reason is and then really get down to the, the nitty gritty of what is the real purpose of what we're trying to do. Very good point. Kathy, you have some thoughts on this one? Yeah, there, there are always going to be people that sell on price. Um, when I first joined the industry, there wasn't 
a lot of online selling, but it was a lot of people selling all, out of their trunk, mm -hmm. one man shows. Mm -hmm. And, and there'll always be people at selling price and and that's not what we're here for we're really help here to help our customer maximize their dollars and what they're trying to do and and really deliver for them and give them the security that this order is going to arrive on time and you know it's you know, and also you know we have a really awesome art department which really makes a big difference too um, but really focusing on the whole picture and not just the price. But we we have the same thing. We have people that send us their links all the time. Um, but it's really great that they they're interested in buying something. Um, you know, for imprint does advertising. Vista Print does advertising, um, and they just help us build the industry. And we just it's our job to make sure we do it better when the customer comes to us. Right. So. A great that's a great point i think i think it all goes back to i think the broader point that you've all made is that it comes down to service and getting to know know your customers and how you can better help them say and if you're actually as as we often use that word uh, being a consultative partner right like you're, you're actually finding out what they need and helping them get it and doing a and, and providing them with a solution as opposed to a product they might have picked out on online that's that's gonna create a relationship and from that comes opportunity and the the ability to keep working with that client right is that a right. fair fair ish sum up <laughs> all right um so i there's an, a, a question i wanted to get into too um we talked about you know maybe some solutions but you know um historically when there's been a recession um i i, I don't want to say our end industry tracks exactly with gdp but when when there is a recession sales and promo tend to go down do you think that that happens again this time or do you or do you feel maybe because we've had you know we're, we're i don't want to say we're post covid but we're in in an era where things are more open and a lot of the kind of um you know live events things of that nature that we might be providing solutions for are now back on are we in a better position potentially to weather a recession this this time or i'm just curious how you think it might affect not just your company but the industry uh, broadly speaking and, and uh, Kathy, we can start with you this time if that's okay. Um, sure. You know, I really, just as we saw in COVID, there are going to be a whole bunch of distributors that say, Oh, it's a recession, you know, and they turn on Netflix and disconnect. Um, <laughs> and then there's going to be ones that, that figure it out. Um, and those will be the survivors. And I think, this was a huge example of that um, that we we've all experienced. Um, I I do get a little concerned about productivity um, of our of our suppliers, um, and I, I don't see the I don't see the recovery happening there as fast as we need it to happen. Um, you know, just this week I had a supplier that that didn't ship on time and and you know that that can really hurt our industry is if we can't keep the promises we need to keep to our our customers um so i'm hoping that that will continue to improve um we have a staff that is all in the office um we all feel we're better together and more collaborative um i can't imagine how challenging it must be when all these people that have gotten rid of their offices completely and everybody's now working from home and is disconnected. Um, but that's, that's just how we like to work. We like to work together. So. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Zach, how about you? Um, what's, your, what's your thoughts on this one? You know, I, I think if, if you asked me to guess, I'd guess that we would see um, uh, sales overall decline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a, to me, it's a question of going back to my comments on competition. We still have a lot of figuring out to do as a society about gatherings. And mm -hmm. A lot of our products have been used in gatherings for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if gatherings are going to come back the same way they did before. And are people going to value gatherings? And so I think it's, it's um, between the massive growth in digital marketing, which continues to absorb more budget uh, for our clients, and, um, and and then some of the changes in the world. I'm not sure the recession would, in and of itself, be the only driver. But I think there is some negative pressure on the overall demand for our product and services right now. Okay. Um, what we're focused on doing is figuring out well, what does that mean. How do we become relevant in different ways? Mm -hmm. um, I think the future is incredibly bright. Mm -hmm. uh, I love what Kathy said earlier about um, 
uh, kind of resurgence of the celebration of brand. Yeah. I strongly believe in it. I agree with you. Um, and we're recruiting a lot of people into this industry from other industries and telling them our story about the way we can serve customers. And not to go too far off track, I do think that's one of the most important things that the industry needs to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it is a it's a war for the best talent, mm -hmm. uh, industry to industry. And as an industry, if we're bringing in great talent to innovate and think of great ideas, that rising tide can lift all of us together. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important for all of us to be thinking about. How do we save in good time so we can invest in the bad, continue to build our organizations uh, so we can deliver great time? Excellent thoughts. Tom, how about you? Yeah, I, I, think, I think on the macro level, sales, sales numbers and revenue numbers are going to come down. Okay. If, when, when, we hit a, when we hit a recession or if this, if this downturn starts to escalate a little bit, I think interest rates are going to have something to play with it. But um, in, individually, like I'm going to say, well, we're growing at 136 percent pace right now, and okay. probably not going to see a, a any, man. That's any that's reduction. slow. Like, what's what? What's the drag? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no. Um, and, and that's up from 65 percent growth over last year. So we're okay. just on this little rocket ship we're trying to hang on to. Okay. Um, but but I do think that I I think we're in like this white hot um, promotional product world that we're living in and operating in right now. We're seeing like extended times that are like beyond what you would see in the holiday season. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not so sure that it's such a bad thing is like, I think inventory needs to catch up with itself yes. within the supply chain. This will give us a chance to do that. It'll get to make cool demand a little bit to, so we can get production numbers back to a, a normal time. Let mm -hmm. us, let us not be so over, let suppliers not be so overworked that, there's causing the shipping problems and they're, they're missing orders or they don't get keyed in or you're waiting 16 days for a proof. And the next thing you know, your order is out a month because mm -hmm. there's all these delays within that process. So I think, I do think we need a little bit of a cooling to just to, just to catch up. Okay. Um, but in order to do that, there's going to have to be some, the mm -hmm. orders are going to have to slow down. Revenue is going to have to slow a bit to even, to make it happen. I don't want that. I don't wish that on anyone, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, I think it's it's inevitable at some point. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Honest take. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll ask you all now for uh, just a, a prediction, given everything we've talked about. It's so similar to question to the last one, but um, not entirely the same, depending on when things might hit. So I'll ask you just, um, do you think that sales overall for, for distributors this year, you know, industry-wide, if we'll be up as an industry, compared to um, 2021, and then just any other final thoughts you want to give on our discussion today, um, that, that would be great. Kathy, if you like, we can start with you. Wow. Um, no pressure. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I know, really. It's, it's so hard to say. There are just so many factors that I haven't experienced in this, you know, mm -hmm. we, we've got uh, an uncertain war going, we've got the oil prices. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's going to be very mixed, like it was um, during COVID, I, I don't think it's, it's not going to be near as bad as it was during COVID for sure. But um, I do think we'll see some suppliers or distributors, excuse me, um, tend to decline. Um, and a lot of it is driven by um, self expectation and, you know, whether you really um, dig in. Um, we're, we're growing like crazy. We've never grown faster. We've doubled the size of our company during COVID. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, I think it's going to be very mixed, frankly. Sorry. All right. Fair, fair yeah. enough. Um, Tom, how about you? What's your thoughts on this one? Yeah. So I think 2022 will, I think we'll can, I think we'll see a positive growth for this year. The first two quarters are just too strong and I don't see the, fourth, I don't see the fourth quarter to be abnormally low and okay. to offset anything for that. But I am interested to watch, um, what happens with these rate increases if it does what it's supposed to do to, to try to cure inflation, mm -hmm. to, to calm down inflation? If that does not work, I think we're in for a rough ride in 2023. Okay. All right. Fair. Fair point. All right. And, and Zach, how about you? Yeah, I agree with Tom. The, um, the, the bellwether from, I mean, look, Tom's up enough apparently and Kathy to cover the industry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just spread some of that around. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, if you take as a bellwether, um, what we hear from suppliers uh, about how 
they're doing so far year to date. And then what I hear from other colleagues on the distributor side, I think is we, there's a lot of, lot of progress. People have such great momentum midway through the year that it's difficult to imagine um, giving all of that back uh, in the second half of the year. So it feels to me like that's, feels to me like that's our direction. I, I think the bigger question that we all have to ask ourselves is, um, you know, what, what are we doing to plan for the future during this time? So in times of strength, how are we taking the successes that we're having and looking at ways to develop unique and difficult to replicate service uh, for our clients? Um, difficult to replicate will make it a lot more resilient to um, changes in the market like uh, the growth of the e-commerce providers. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, um, I, I have a positive outlook for this year. All right. I think that's a, a great positive thought to um, to end on today. Uh, Tom, Kathy, Zach, thank you guys so much for, for making taking over an hour about out of your day to, to be with me and, and to share insights. We hope everybody listening appreciated it. I think that was a lot of great stuff. And I'm, I'm going to go back and give this a second listen because I got about six or seven article ideas based on what you guys said. So <laughs> absolutely fantastic stuff. So sincerely, thank you so much for doing cool. this today. Thanks, Chris. Great. Right. Thanks, Chris. See you. Bye. Yep. Yep.